yeah, uh, these kind of sets and what they bring to Popper. Mostly I'm interested in reprints uh, and also on new legality. Mostly the new legality, right? <laughs> so I, I'm super hyped for this. Uh, some cards here that are very interesting. So let's just get on with it and let's start with the first cards here. Alabaster Mage, I don't know if it's new or not. I'm going to search for it. Um, yeah, it's new. I, I don't think this card is great. It gives you any creature lifelink, so it allows you to just, if you have enough mana, to give lifelink to all, your, all of your creatures. But that doesn't really look like so relevant for Popper, so I think this is going to be fine maybe in cube or some other niche uh, formats like PDH. So it's interesting to have it. It's a very cool effect. Uh, I don't see any combos or anything with this, but it's interesting. So yeah, yay. Then we have Ancestral Blade. Ancestral Blade is actually very, very interesting. This card is a two-man artifact that when it enters the battlefield, you create a 1-1 one -one and you attach soldier, uh, the blade to the soldier and the creature gets plus one, plus one and it whips for one. So. This means this is a new um, card for, for Popper, and I think it's pretty interesting. First off, it's an ETB, so if you flicker this with costly flicker, you can uh, flicker artifacts with flicker, you can create uh, more soldiers, so that's interesting. I don't think that's where you want to be with this card, but it's something that you can do. Uh, more interestingly, uh, 2 mana 2 2 is not amazing in terms of stats. But since this allows you to equip this to one of your creatures, it has pseudo haste, which can allow you to attack with uh, with a creature that weren't uh, weren't able to attack before. So yeah, I think this card is going to be interesting. I don't think it's going to break anything. Uh, again, this is awesome for cube. This is awesome for um, PDH and and formats like that. I don't think it's going to see a lot of play in. Uh, popper, but the card is pretty interesting and has a pretty unique effect. So yeah, I I'm I'm very happy with this card. This was already common before. Yeah, nothing new here, nothing new here. Crypt Swap is another new card uh, for Popper at least. This is a three mana tribal instant shapeshifter that allows you to exile a creature and create and its control creates a one one shapeshifter. So this is almost a strict upgrade to uh, Afterlife. And this card already saw some play on Tron mostly. Um, nowadays, Tron doesn't play this, and if it wants, uh, removal spell is going to have another, probably other options. But uh, this card was played mostly in decks that run white and want some answer, some catch all answer to creatures that don't really care about the opponent having a 1 1. So I think it's going to see some play eventually. Also, it's importantly, it has Shape Shifter, so it means that you can do some. Uh, interesting things. For example, you can fetch it with Aurochs. Um, I don't remember exactly how the, the, call, the card call here, Aurochs heard. Uh, I, there are a couple of cards like this that allow you to search for an Aurochs card. And this, what it means is that you can search your library for a card with the creature type Aurochs. And since this has a creature type Aurochs because it has changeling, um, you you can actually search for the for it with our card. You can do some other things like I don't know sliver cycle for it. I, I don't think it's going to see a lot of play for that reason. But uh, in let's say in UW con uh, control decks, you can play this. It's a catch all answer to creatures and also a one one uh, is not uh, something very interesting. Uh, to give the opponent. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. Again, this is going to be awesome in PDH and, and, and Cube and all that. So it's it's a good reprint uh, and a good in, uh, inclusion to the format. Crusader of Aldrich. Um, I think this is a new card also for Popper. Some of these cards were already leaked, so I already knew that they were going to be downshifted. Um, so that's why you see that I have the search already there. So, Lucid of Odric, uh, power and toughness are equal to the number of creatures you control. So it means that at least it's a 1-1 one, one for 3. Of course, you don't want to have a 1-1 one, one for 3. It's going to be uh, mostly like a curved topper for a token stack. Again, if you build a token stack, this is going to be a reasonable uh, inclusion. Uh, some card that uh, 
really makes me remember is the card uh, squad captain I think it's called squad captain which is a 5 mana 2-2 two, two that enters with a plus 1 plus 1 for each other creature so um, it's similar to this it doesn't have vigilance and the uh, power and toughness change depending if you have more creatures and or less creatures so I think this is a, a bit more strong right but then again um, Scion, I, I don't remember exactly what's the call, what's it called here. Sorry, yeah, Scion of the Wild already exists and it's not played anywhere. Uh, I think uh, there was a, a green token stack that played this, so I think if you build a uh, white token stack, Crusade of Falling is something that you're going to have in mind. So that's that's great. Fencing Ace is a reprint, but it's not a very valuable one, so we don't care. Fortify and Glean Sleep. Artisan, the same thing. There are reprints that don't add a lot of, to the format. These cards are already cheap, so those are fine, I guess. Um, okay, these two, again, they were already common, so we don't care about those. Also, not played at all. Sanctum Gargoyle, the same thing. Sanctum Spirit is a new one. It can gain indestructible at the end of turn if you discard a historic card. In your format, it's mostly going to be artifacts. Uh, you can discard like Ramirez de Piedros to this, but um, yeah, four mana for a three-two life link is not going. It's not where you want to be in this format. Also, indestructible doesn't work versus some of the removal that the format has. So this card seems a bit clunky for me. I don't think it's going to see a lot of play. Um, but it's interesting nonetheless, right? Because it gives indestructible, which is a keyword that we don't have a lot in our format, and it's a discard wallet for uh, uh, artifacts, so it has some, some things going for it. I don't see anywhere where, where it's interesting to play right now, but uh, maybe you find some combo uh, with this card. It has uh, a couple of things that call your attention, right? The discard a card that doesn't have any other costs and that it gains indestructible means that it has some uh, good upside there. So it's, it's interesting. Again, this is a uh, strength farms. I I think it was already legal. Um, yeah, I don't know how to write. So yeah, it was already legal in shadows or in strat. It's a uh, one mana instant that gives plus two plus two to a creature, and if you control an equipment, you create a token. Um, yeah, it's not very powerful. Combat tricks in our in, in our format don't have a place really. You need to have some massive upside for a uh, for a combat trick to be uh, to be playable, and this upside isn't really playable. Not a lot of equipment either on our format, <coughs> so I don't know. I, I don't see it very interesting as a very interesting card. Maybe you can play it as a <coughs> sorry about that. Some sort of tech against edicts on the sideboard but I don't think so um, yeah I, I don't see this card as being very relevant for the format Trevin Inspector as a reprint this is good because I guess the getting foils of this card is a bit more difficult even that it's um, it was only printed once if I recall correctly Now, oh, well, it has also a printing in Mystery Boosters, but yeah. Uh, so this card is going to be... Uh, of course, this card is, is amazing in the format is being played a lot. So this means that it's going to have... Um, yeah, if you play this uh, Double Masters, maybe you can pick up a, a couple of foil at once or foil... Uh, I don't know, the, the tokens, if they're coming for or not. So that gives you a bit of upside. Top of the statue, it isn't played in our format either. It's um, it was common, I think, in in the in War of the Spark. So that rounds up uh, white. So it wasn't and uh, there wasn't anything of note except a couple of niche cards, maybe ancestral blade. So I don't think this any of these white cards is going to see a lot of uh, play in popper, at least the new cards, right? Then let's go to blue. First card, Apprentice Wizard. I think this was already illegal. So, sorry, I didn't explain what it does. It's a mana dork in blue. So, 
It goes three mana, yes, and it only gives colorless mana, yes. But uh, the ability to double ramp you is very good. Um, it's similar to Palladium Mirror, but in blue. Um, Palladium Mirror is illegal in Popper, so this card, uh, even though it isn't some amazing card, I think the art is new though, which I find very interesting. Yeah, the art is, the art is new, and the art, I, it's very nonsensical. I don't really understand what's happening here. Oh, just wanted to zoom into the art. Yeah, I don't get what's happening here, so... <laughs> but, um, yeah, this card is interesting. It isn't played a lot in, for in in the format, but it's a card that exists and it has a neat ability, so maybe in the future it's going to break something. Then we have Archivian Restoration, which is a 4 mana sorcery that can return an artifact from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this card is new to the format and it's interesting. It has a very unique ability to reanimate an artifact only from your uh, graveyard and it costs double glue and it costs four mana, but uh, it's an interesting ability. Um, I don't see any combos with this. Uh, maybe you can play it in some sort of Ashnot Saldar combo where you reanimate the piece that you are missing to combo. I can see that. I don't know. Um, there is already a card in blue which uh, I don't remember exactly the name. Um, let me search for it. Yeah, this one. Draftness Restoration that can return a, a lot of artifacts from your graveyard to the top of your library. Um, so that means that for one mana you get the artifact on top of your library. So and, and this card isn't really played anywhere, so I don't see a Divian Restoration being played, but again, this is an interesting effect that it's new to the format, so it gives your uh, <laughs> brewing juices flowing, right? So, great for the format. Brainstorm, always good to have a reprint. Sadly, it's not the art I like the most, but if this art is your jam, then you're going to be able to find it. Also, more importantly, this has additional art. Uh, yeah, so this is new art, uh, and it's again, it's an interesting art with some weird effect. And maybe this is what you, this is your jam. This is what you like to play. So this may have, a, um, uh, this might be a good reprint for the people that want this specific art of brainstorm, or maybe this specific art of brainstorm, or they want to fetch some uh, um, foil ones. Uh, this uh, this is going to be good for them. Uh, Cloud Reader's Things isn't played, it's not good. Again, this is just clunky for the format. Corridor Monitor, this was already illegal in the old rain, so it doesn't change anything. Uh, it, it doesn't cost anything else, anything either, so it's not important for the format. Fairy Magnus, the same thing. This isn't played in the format, so we don't really care. Frogify, I think Frogify is new. Let me check. So Frogify is a uh, yeah it's new it's an enchant it's an enchantment aura that enchants a creature and that creature loses all abilities and it's a blue frog blue frog uh, with base power and toughness one one so um, yeah this is a new card there was already a card similar to this that was Casmina transmutation which doesn't change the type and and the color, so this changes the, the base type and color to blue frog. So that may be good for some uh, for some niche situations. For example, if your opponent is playing some kind of tribal deck, you can remove their uh, one of their elf and one of their elves, and now they have one one less elf. Um, this is not the best removal that blue has uh, in our format, so I don't see this being played. Um, yeah, uh, maybe if you play like I don't know, <laughs> Circle of Protection Blue, you can Circle of Protection this. I, I don't know, I don't see it. I'm not seeing it. Yeah. Uh, let me double check that Hinder is illegal. I, re I recall it's not. 
maybe this. So hinder is in the other, so it doesn't matter for our format. Metallic Rebuke is really good as a reprint. I think the card was really uh, costing a bit of money in paper, especially foils. So having access to more foils is going to always be great. This card is on and off being played in, in Affinity builds. Um, so it's not a great card for the format in the sense that it's not something that we play a lot. So it's okay. We have Barthetic Strix here. This was already legal and we don't really care about this card. It isn't played anywhere. Um, yeah. Relic Runner, same thing. We don't care about this card. Rush of Knowledge. This is a good reprint because this card really costed a bit of money, I think, in uh, Magic Online and also in paper. It's kind of hard to get because it doesn't have a lot of reprints, if I recall correctly. Even though this here is as uh, uncommon, okay, yeah, it costs a bit on ticks, but not on paper because it was reprinted on Commander. Um, but it's difficult to, to find, so maybe you can find your, your playset for uh, some weird combo deck. This is a great card. This card draws a lot of cards when you need it to. Let's see what else here. Sift, uh, it's legal, we don't really care about this card, we have a strictly better one because we have one that's instant. Steel Sabotage was already legal, we don't really care about this effect. Uh, yeah, it was, it, it saw some play in Mono Blue Delver uh, as an answer to artifacts, but it's not that good. Uh, you prefer an all most of the time, so yeah. It's a cool card though. Here, this is a new one, the Dalken Infuser. Yeah, so this was a, this is a new card in Double Masters, uh, now legal in Popper. It has at the beginning of your upkeep, you might put a charge counter on target artifact. Doesn't look like much, and I mean it isn't. Put in a charge counter, I don't think we have a lot of synergies in our format. Uh, we can search for it, we can search for that. Um, but importantly, there is a new card that has uh, charge counter synergies. So at least we have one card <laughs> that has synergies with this infuser. Let's just search for that. Oh, crap. Okay, so we have like Golden Arm, that's not great. Trick Horn, that's not great. Pentas Prism, this means that with the Infuser you can generate one mana of any color to your mana pool. That's okay, I guess. What else? Um, Spear of the Suns is like a worse Pentas Prism in this case. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't see any, any reason to be playing this. Maybe if you are a Heliophile combo deck where you put a lot of charge counters on it and then throw it at the opponent's face. <laughs> or maybe you are uh, proliferating and opaline embracers. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, also an, an interesting thing, this like this is like a worse um, this is like a worse proliferate. So for example, throwing bird. Thrumming Bird already, when deals combat damage to a player, you proliferate. So this means that you can uh, proliferate each, each turn and not only charge counters. So if the artifact that you are putting counters in doesn't already have any charge counters, you can do it with this. So I don't think this is going to see any play. It's interesting, but I think there is better things to do in the format. Now we start with black. So in blue we saw a couple of interesting things, mostly reprints. Um, I think the only the only playable new card is Argivian Restoration, which isn't really good. So again, nothing great hit there. Then in black we have some spice now, and this is Bone Picker. So Bone Picker is four mana for a three two flame death touch, which is not bad stats if you think about it. And if a creature died this turn, it costs only black mana. This card is new for the format and it's amazing. It's, you're going to see it uh, be played. This is going to see play for sure. 
I expect it to see to see it in mono black control decks, for example, that uh, they are mainly a, a removal pile, so a lot of creatures are dying in that deck. Not yours, mostly all the opponents. You can also play it in like a sacrifice deck. So if you play like for example um, Carrion Feeder and you are sacrificing your own creatures, you can play a 1 mana 3 2 Flying Death Touch. So, first off, Flying Death Touch are amazing uh, abilities to have on a creature. On defense, this means that it can trade with anything your opponent has. If your opponent wants to attack with a Gourmet Gangler, you can block it and just trade for just one mana. That's a lot of value. Flying Death Touch is super relevant all the time. Most importantly, it has a 3 attack for only one mana. This means that you can pressure the opponent very hard. Yes, it's a bit... Uh, it's a bit... Uh, how do you say this? Um, it, it's going to die to almost any removal in the format. But it puts a lot of pressure, and if the opponent can't remove it, you can just trade it with whatever the opponent has, if you want to, of course. So I expect this card to see play, and I expect this card to be good in the format. I don't think it's going to put mono black control in somewhere tier one deck uh, status, but it's going to it's going to make it better, and it's going to make other decks better just by being there. So I, I'm really happy with this. Then we have Cast Down. Cast Down is going to be amazing in the format. This is one of black, instant, destroy target, non-legendary creature. So uh, there are not a lot of legendaries in our format. Most of them are just crap that aren't being played, like Hoven and uh, Lady Orca, and of course the most important of them all, Ramirez de Pietro. None of these cards uh, really matter to the format, so I expect Cast Down to be amazing. Um, this is like a strict upgrade to one of the mainstays of the format in Doomblade. Doomblade destroys target non-black creatures, so uh, this means that one in one in five creatures you can say you can't kill, and this card is played all the time. This kills anything. This is basically an upgraded murder too. A murder doesn't see a lot of play because it does it's double black. So I even seen decks play like Ren Flesh, for example, uh, Teachings deck that want to have a, a an instant that can destroy any creature relevant in the format. So Cast Down kills everything. There are a couple of things that it doesn't kill, of course, like uh, Guardian of the Guild Pack and tokens. But as a point and click removal spell, it's going to be great, and I expect it to see a lot of it and you should expect it to. So this means, what this means to the format is that now Gourmet Gangler is going to see, it's going to be a bit worse because Gourmet Gangler, the interesting thing is that it dodges, it do randomly dodges a lot of removal spells. It dodges Doomblade because it's black. It dodges Bolt because it has 5 Daphnes. It dodges, um, I don't know, um, this figure uh, Defiant in the fifth turn, Scred until the fifth turn, Flame Slash, <laughs> uh, and the list goes on, on and on. All of the for, all of the format defining removal spells can't kill Gurmagangler, and that's why it was so good. But now with Cast Down, now in the format, and a lot of people wanting to play this, I will stay away from Gurmagangler um, because now you have to spend a lot of cards to protect it. Um, so yeah, if you fill your graveyard so much that one mana five fives is something that you can do easily, then yeah, you're going to play it anyways. But it's going to be a bit worse. Uh, interestingly, the, the decks that want to play Cast Down may be decks that want to play Gorma Gangler. So the maybe the <laughs> the mirror is going to be who kills who draws the Cast Down for the Gorma Gangler so, or some dynamic like that. Cosmic Plunder is a card that is criminally underplayed in the format, but it was already legal. Uh, you can sacrifice a creature or artifact to draw two cards at its speed. Um, this is interesting. Uh, I see this card played, for example, in um, some decks with sacrifice synergies and maybe some arti random artifacts lands to sacrifice to this. Uh, yeah, it's a good card to have in the format, but it was already legal. So, nothing new there. Same thing with Defiant Salvager, I've never seen this played. 
uh, Dire Fleet Horror, never seen it played, it was already legal. Disciple of the Vault, I think it's very difficult to find copies of this. Let, let me check. So some of these reprints, yeah, it was only printed in Nirodin, and this isn't playable. So yeah, it was already a bit costly in terms of ticks. So maybe we are going to be able to find more copies of this card. Also, it's just from Mirrodin, and I even though I have a place of these cards, uh, and I got it very cheap, since they are from Mirrodin, they are like beat up, like they have a lot of uh, um, in a bad bad state, like really, they, they've seen things, right? So now with a new reprint, we can have new fresh copies of this going around, so that's good for the format, I guess. The best, uh, this card, uh, again, not a valuable reprint for us, but it's a good reprint nonetheless. This card sees play in some decks, uh, mostly as a cyborg card. I've seen it in the main deck too. Interestingly, now it's a bit relevant because uh, not only it can discard a, a creature, obviously that's good, but it can also discard uh, Bonder's Ornament, which is a very difficult thing to grind through if you are playing a black deck, right? Because you can't kill it. Uh, black doesn't have artifact destruction. So, Driver of the Dead. This is an interesting card. I'm sure there are some combos with this. We just don't know them yet. <laughs> this card is a, was already legal and wasn't being played. So, Interesting nonetheless. Executioner's Capsule. This card is played uh, sometimes in Trinket Mage decks. So maybe you can get a copy of this if you want. Uh, I will try to hold one of these uh, if possible. It's an interesting card. It, it's nothing, nothing amazing. I, I prefer to have cast down, right? But maybe if you have uh, some weird synergies, uh, then it's going to be good. Yeah. Glaze Fiend is also a reprint. That's uh, it's almost like a, an, an Aegis. It has flying. It's a zero one and it costs two. And when another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus 2, plus 2. Notably, this counts also lands, so this can get very big in affinity builds. Maybe this is going to see some play in affinity sometime, but right now it isn't being played at all, so not that relevant to the format. Hello Spillage, I think this card is new. Let's, let me check. No, not no. So, uh, yeah, it was uncommon in excellent. So this is a sorcery, target opponent discards two cards, and if you attack with a creature this turn, you create a treasure. So, uh, if you create a treasure with this, this means that it was basically a two mana discard, but you can only cast it on turn three. Um, I don't think this is going to see a lot of play, I don't think. Um, I, I'm trying to think of combos with this. I, I can't really find anything right now. Even if this costs one, is like a free spell to make the opponent discard, so it's nothing there. But interesting nonetheless. Uh, maybe you have some artifact synergies with uh, that you can use here. I don't think there are a lot in black. Um, well, we already saw uh, the glaze fin, for example. But since this triggers. Uh, after you attack, doesn't really matter if you give it plus two, plus two. So, I don't know. Maybe it's going to see some play. I don't think so. I think um, range mine is better. So, yeah, this is black, black for target opponent or target player discards cards unless they discard an artifact. So, yeah, this is more, more often than not a uh, two mana discard two. And this is also, two mana this card too, but you can do it. You can't do it on turn two. So maybe if you want more range mines, you can play this. But you also need to be attacking, so it's kind of difficult to balance those two things. But interesting nonetheless. Then this is a very important reprint for the format in some respects. Oubliette. Oubliette uh, right now changed the the wording. It used to be different than this. Uh, now it's a bit better, in my opinion. Obliet now, when it enters the battlefield, you exile a creature. It, it used to exile the creature and not everything attached to it, like it says here. And then when it returns to the battlefield, 
uh, sorry, when it leaves the battlefield, you return the exile card, uh, and it returns tab the window, all the things. Uh, this means that it used to trigger ETBs. Right now, it doesn't. When it enters the battlefield, a creature faces out, and when it faces in, you tap it. So this means that this is not not uh, no longer two different triggers. So you can't do uh, nasty things with the, putting the triggers on the stack in different order and all that. And, uh, but most importantly, if, if the opponent removes the oblivion, then they don't trigger the ATB. So you can oblivate a mood drifter or a, a, some value card like that and don't fear the opponent just removing it and getting more value that you were able to remove from them, right? So it's a good reprint. Also, more importantly than, than anything else, <laughs> it's a bit expensive in Magic Online and in paper. Of course, the, all the art is going to always be a bit more pricey because it's awesome. It's awesome art. I really, really like how this card looks. Uh, and this art is like meh for me. I really, I'm, I'm a really old school uh, Magic player. <laughs> I really prefer this kind of cards, the look of this, the feeling of this. So I would rather have Arabian Nights ones, but if it costs like five times as much, then nah, I'm fine with this. <laughs> so it's a good reprint for the format. If you are trying to build a Mono Black Devotion deck that wants to play this card, then it's going to be fine to find one of these to four five bucks instead of 25. <laughs> so that's awesome. What else? Uh, Silum Gar Scavenger. It's really plain in the format, it's cool to have a reprint, but this was already printed in Modern Horizons not that long ago. So, yeah, I don't think this is very relevant for the format. What else? Supernatural Stamina, already reprinted a couple of times. Again, this card sees some finish play every now and again. Uh, you can do some tricks with it, because when this creature dies, return it. This means that it's like undying, like if the, if the creature has ETBs or uh, dice triggers, then they trigger again. So it's better than, say, regenerating it, that doesn't trigger anything. So this card is, is good for that reason. I really like this card in, in Limited and all that, so maybe it's it's good in, the, in that respect. Uh, Twisted Abomination, uh, this card used to be to see play in, in Popper, right now it doesn't see a lot of play. Um, a 5-3 that regenerates, it's kind of a good stat line, even though it looks kind of dorky, mostly because regenerate is some kind of uh, protection. And the Swamp Cycle help you find your land drops, and most importantly, it can also allow you to find the Witch's Cottage. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, Witch's Cottage, which is also Swamp, so you can play the cottage and put the, this on top to cast it the next turn, for example. So it allows for some weird shenanigans there. Um, again, this is not a card that's been played a lot, but it's a good card to have if, if you want to have it. So in black, we have a couple of really, really good things. First off, the Ulyra reprint is amazing for the value. Uh, and then also we saw uh, bone picker as, as, and cast down as really meaningful downshifts. These are going to see a lot of play, so that's great for the format. Then red, and uh, now a braid. A braid is amazing. I'm so happy this is a <laughs> this is popper legal now. So this is an instance that it allows you to do deal three damage to a creature or destroy an artifact. So two mana instant destroy an artifact is not something you want to have in your in your deck. Two mana deal three damage to a creature is not something you want to have in your deck. But the ability to choose between one of the other, one or the other, makes it so much better than it looks. So, a braid right now is playing modern in sideboards and in main in main decks because it's so useful in so many situations, right? And even modern, you can see it as a even more aggressive deck than uh, popper. Eh, sorry, more aggressive format than popper uh, is more often than not, a turn faster, at least, than Pover. So I, I expect a Ray to see play in, in our format, and maybe replacing uh, Lightning Bolts in decks that don't really care about the reach. Uh, like, I expect to see one or two copies of a Braid main deck in Blue Red Fairies, for example, uh, or Boros Monarch, maybe Boros Bully, because one of the important things that this kills is the Monders Fundament. So killing this is very important because 
this card is, sees a lot of play in Tron and other control decks as a way of drawing a lot of cards and fixing their mana. So having main deck answers to that is going to be amazing. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a corner case that I'm saying here, but I'm not. I'm, I'm really, really saying that if you can have main deck artifact destruction in your deck, right now is the moment to have it. And this means that a braid is, at, at least in this moment in the meta, amazing and really good thing for the format. Because Modern Sondament is kind of the hotness that it's taking the format by storm and is kind of being a problem right now. And I, I've seen some people asking for it to be banned. I don't think that's the way to go, but um, yeah, it's, it's a card that's very important for the format. So having main deck answers to artifacts is going to be awesome. Additionally, uh, you can also kill some other uh, artifacts like Prophetic Prism when your opponent casts a Clean Hop uh, and, and killing the Clean Hop because it doesn't have anything to bounce, for example, or or maybe killing a land in, in the Boros Monarch deck when they have a clanky hand with a, a couple of artifact lands. Or maybe killing a Mirror Enforcer, right? Uh, when when your removal only this 3 damage, you can also just kill an artifact. So you can just kill the Mirror Enforcer that your affinity player or opponent has. So this has a lot of play. And it's going to. I, I, I expect to see one or two copies in most red based mid range decks. I expect to see one or two copies in some sideboards in red. Uh, maybe decks that has have less removal and have, want to have access to removal or artifact destruction without using too many slots. And I think this is going to change the meta and may make some decks uh, not run Bonder Tournament if they can. Because if you play the Monarchy, for example, then they can destroy it. But if you play Bonder Sonament, they can destroy it. So I expect that to change, maybe. Let's just see how the dynamic changes there. Then we have Baldubian Rage, which is, which is an X and a red for an instant. Target attacking creature gets plus X plus O at the end of turn. And you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. So this is new to the format, but I don't think it's good. <laughs> um, so let's just see how it works. If you play, if you pay two mana, you get plus one plus zero to an attacking creature, so you can't use it defensively, and you draw a card in the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, so you can't really cycle it very easily either. And even if you just want to draw another card and pay only red, you have to wait a whole turn to draw that card. So I, I don't expect this card to see a lot of play. If you have infinite mana, then you have better ways of um, finishing the game than this. So I, I don't see any reason to play this card in the deck. Maybe you find one and um, all the power to you. Battle Rattle Shaman. This card uh, was reprinted in Corset 2, but I think it was already legal. Let's just check. Okay, it's taking its time. Yeah, it was already common. Um, this card is a bit clunky for the format, in the sense that 4 mana for a, a creature that uses heals like attacking creatures above, above doesn't seem so particularly useful. Um, decks that want to attack doesn't really care about a 4 mana uh, play. And even then, they can play like Goblin Hill Cutter. That's so much better than that, for example. If, and you can even cast it for three if you want to. So I don't expect this card to see a lot of play, but maybe you want it for your cube or whatever, and it's good to have a reprint. What else? Brimstone Bolly. I think it's a reprint, and I uh, of course a reprint. So sorry, I think it's it was legal, and it was upshifted to uncommon. Let's, let me check. Yeah, it was already legal and upshifted to uncommon. So it, it can deal 5 damage to any to any target, but it costs 3, so like um, Burn doesn't want to play a 3 mana spell if it can. Um, but maybe some form of red-black sacrifice deck can use this. So yeah, it's, it's a good card to have access to again, but uh, nothing special for the format. Uh, Cathartic Reunion. 
Uh, this is a good reprint. I don't think we have a lot of reprints for that card. Well, th there was a couple of... Oh, uh, yeah, it was Icoria too. So, but it has the art from Kaladesh, so maybe that makes it a bit more uh, appealing to you if you prefer this card than the guy hugging a dinosaur. So, yeah. Uh, again, uh, it's a good uh, moment to grab a foil copy if you want it for your decks or something. Again, nothing really played in the format, but uh, yeah, whatever. Um, Galvanic Blast, this is a reprint. Um, sorry, this was upshifted to Uncommon. This card is amazing in the format. It's being played in Affinity and Boros Monarch. So again, if you want to have your playset of Galvanic Blast, then this is a good moment to grab them. Also, I saw that the for some reason, the foils of this in paper are very expensive. <coughs> So maybe you can grab a couple if you are able to. That's going to be useful for you. I don't. Th I think this is legal too. Oh. Yeah, it was legal before. It's a one mana one one, and it gets plus two plus zero for each equipment attached to it. It's nothing special. Um, yeah, I don't see this being played anywhere in the format. Uh, and then we have Kazul's Toll Collector, which is an ogre that's at 3 2 for 3. And you can pay 0 mana to attach an equipment you control to it. And you can activate it as sorcery only. So this means that uh, you can equip it for free. There aren't any good, expensive to attach artifacts in the format. Um, I I'm trying to think. Um, maybe you can find some weird combo deck that cares about this, but yeah, there are a lot of equipment. Most of them are just mediocre. Um, yeah, like you can attach a rose thorn for only zero mana, but. I don't know. Um, yeah, and and the restriction to only be a sorcery means that you can't use, for example, I don't know, the stealth suit to make it to give it practically all, all the time shroud. So I, I don't see this being played. I don't think there is anything to do here, but it's an interesting card, so it's good to have an interesting card uh, being printed for our formats. Then Lady X, this card is a good reprint for us. Uh, it's been it's seen some play in like Wars Pulley sometimes, and also on uh, Reanimator decks. Just decks that, that care about discarding cards basically and care about killing the opponent's creatures. One mana for five damage means that you can kill like an opposing Gourmet Gangler very easily and almost any creature in the format really. Uh, so it's a useful card. Um, Again, uh, a good moment to grab a couple if you care about it. Uh, it's not something that you are dying to find, but interesting. Orkish Bandal is an interesting card. It's a massive ogre warrior orc warrior card that it's a 1 1 for 2 for some reason. Uh, maybe it's really tiny and the <laughs> thing that he's grabbing is even smaller. I don't know. You can tap and sacrifice an artifact to shock something. Uh, sadly, the, since you have to tap it, this means that it has to survive a whole turn to do something. But the ability to uh, sacrifice and turn artifacts into shocks is very good. So I expect people to try this and try to, to break it somehow. Uh, because ability really can be board control and board control in Popper is very, very good. Um, you may already know this card, but like Pestilence is super good in the format because it's a repeatable way of board control, right? Of course, this, of course this needs an artifact to be doing something and this doesn't need to untap for you to do something. But yeah, I expect some people to try this. Uh, maybe some kind of red artifact, uh, kind of mid-range list can, can make use of this. Also, there are a couple of artifacts that want to go to the graveyard, like uh, Igor Wellspring. I read it wrong here. 
score. So cards like this, there are a couple that you want to sacrifice. So maybe Orkish Mandal can be there as a way of uh, doing board control and getting value by sacrificing artifacts. So I really like this card. It's going to, I think it's going to see some play. Uh, maybe as people try it and, and try to see if it can be good or not. I don't think it's going to be amazing or anything, but it's interesting nonetheless. Then we have Rapacious Dragon. This is another downshift to common. It's a 3-3 flyer for 5, and when it enters the battlefield, you create two, two treasure tokens. So this is interesting because you can generate some uh, mana if you flicker it, for example. We already had this card in the past. That's also on play in Familiars. And this is like a, a bit worse in, in that deck because you don't care about the body or anything. You just care about combo enough. And the combo it was, if you're interested in, it was uh, flickering the pirates and a wall, and a demonic wall, and get back the flicker uh, while the flicker costs less than two mana. So you get for when you cast one mana for the flicker, then you get two mana with this and you get the flicker back. It means that you can create infinite treasure tokens. You can do the same thing here, but this card is a bit worse in the sense that it's not blue. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, it, it may see some play in like, uh, again, a deck that cares about artifacts, a, de a deck that cares about sacrificing things, maybe a mid-range deck that uh, wants to have some top end that does something, right? So when you reach a uh, five mana, this is basically a three mana, three, three flyer, and that those stats are really good. Uh, not gonna like, I, I would take a three mana, three, three flyer almost any day, but Again, Popper is not a uh, format about uh, five five drops that don't do draw cards, right? The, the five drops that are being played generate a lot of value, and this generates some value, um, but not not the the level we expect. So interesting. Uh, you can brew with it. Maybe you can build a dragon pile. Maybe you like dragons. I don't know. <laughs> interesting card, nonetheless. Um, Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under control, it gets plus two, plus two, and trample. Eh, a three mana two three that can attack as a four three sometimes. Maybe if, if you trigger it infinite times, it's good because it gives trample. Maybe you can find something there. I believe there are better combo uh, combo the, uh, cards for that effect. Scream Run Goblin. Uh, this was already legal and it wasn't ever played. Uh, the Blood Rush is an interesting mechanic. It allows you to trade your cards for combat tricks. The problem is that it's only on attacking creatures, so that this doesn't mean that you can use it defensively to prevent a bolt to killing your creature or anything. So, uh, yeah, if Blood Rush was to do it at any time, it would be way better. But right now it's okay. It's just okay. The Timur Battle Rage. This is a card that's played a lot in Affinity and um, Easy Blitz when it's played because that deck stopped being a lot, played a lot. Um, and this card is, uh, again, this card is not expensive, but it's it's sometimes difficult to find these cards because they, were, they weren't they were printed as much. And that happens a lot with cards that have, uh, for example, this card references the uh, Timur tribe that's from uh, Cans of Tarkir, so it was reprinted a lot because of that, I, I guess. Also because it's a bit in, in limited. This in limited is amazing. So yeah, I, I expect, um, I expect, uh, yeah, uh, being able to have a couple of copies of this now is going to be good for you. Uh, this card I will, already was legal. So in in red we had. Uh, Orkish Bundle, which is a very interesting card to have. A couple of good value cards and a braid that is going to be amazing and being played in the format. So we already saw like three or four cards that I'm sure we are going to see play in the format. On to green, the last color. Uh, we have the first reprint, uh, Ancient Steerings. It's in play sometimes in Green Tron. Right now, Green Tron without the map isn't as good as it was before because. 
Um, yeah, it, it was uh, an old deck, uh, all in deck into assembling Tron as fast as possible. And um, yeah, right now without map, it, it, it isn't seeing a lot of play. I don't think it's playable anymore. But uh, yeah, it's an interesting card nonetheless. Uh, you can you can play it if you want uh, in regular Tron. Um, but yeah, I, I think this card also was a bit expensive because it's in play in Modern 2. So yeah, it was like a almost a dollar and a couple of like not not free on magical line let's just say let's just leave it like that then bloodbriar this was really legal and it never saw a lot of play uh it's an interesting um ability that it has it can grow very big uh, but three mana is a bit too much for an aggressive card because this card is aggressive let's not lie to us you are not going to use this to block you want to attack so 3 mana, so it means that you can start attacking on turn 4 and if you are an aggressive deck starting attacking on turn 4 with your card is not worth running, basically. So yeah, it's okay. Uh, again, for Q, PDH, all that, amazing. Uh, Chatter of the Squirrel, it's a uh, 1 mana 1-1 one, one, and you can flash it back. So it means that it's 2 one ones for 3 mana. This is a fine trade. The problem is that one ones are, aren't great in the format. Uh, maybe if you are like discarding or milling your deck a lot, then this card can do a lot of things. Uh, maybe give from some free value. I don't think it's worth running though. Uh, let me check. I think it was really legal. Yeah. So nothing great there. It's a good card though. Clear shot is an instant. Uh, for 3 mana, target creature you control gets plus 1, plus 1, it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So, basically, since the printing of Ram Through, since the printing of Ram Through, you have to, you have to be way better than this to see play in our format. Yes, it gives a bit of a, ba a boost, but this card is so much better in the decks that care about this kind of effect. So I don't expect this to see a lot of play, sadly, because it's a good card on the list. Complete Naturalist, I love this card. This is a 5 mana 4-4, four, four. so okay, stats, 4-4 four, four is pretty big for the format. And when it enters what if you basically naturalize, hence the name. You might destroy target artifact or enchantment. So uh, even though this card seems like completely normal, uh, we don't have a lot of this effect in our format. The similar, the most similar card was uh, Wicker Burrow. I, I don't remember how to write this card. Okay, Wicker Bow Welder, uh, four mana for a four four that enters with a plain, minus one minus one counter, and you can remove it and pay in green to destroy an artifact or enchantment. So in the end of the day, it's the same. Trade 5 mana for a 4-4 four, four that did a naturalize, but this costs 1 green less and you can flicker it. So it gives some amount of value there. Uh, so it's like a side uh, side upgrade to Wigger Bow Elder. So this may see play like in Band of Family decks, perhaps, uh, as a way of destroying artifacts and enchantments and being flickerable with Ephemerate and such, that you can't do that with the Elder. So, interesting. Uh, I expect to I expect this card to see some amount of play, maybe. But the, the, the problem is that it costs 5, so you want to have like a, a big mana kind of deck for it to be playable in a format. You, you can't just put this in Stompy and call it a day, right? So, yeah. It's going to see some play, though. Crop rotation. So this card was already a bit expensive. Uh, well, not not really. So it, it's going to cost uh, around a buck, but it's going to cost a, a bit more in foil, and it's going to bring the price in in Magic Online a bit lower because it, it's really expensive right now. If you want to assemble Tron in in Power right now, since you have don't have map. You rely on crop rotation. Uh, right now it's an expensive card to have, so if you want to build Tron, you have to pay for this card. 
So having it as a reprint is going to be good for that reason. And for you folks that try to pimp your decks, maybe accessing to this art in foil is, isn't something that you were able before. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't ever in this art in foil, I don't think. So that's amazing. Also, oh, I, I forgot about this. It has showcase art. So if you care about this art, it's going to be also accessible. It's a really cute art. I, I like it. So yeah, it's a good reprint. It has some uh, nice value for the guys that want to pimp their decks. Crushing Bind. So three mana for a uh, destroy target creature with flying or destroy target artifact. I don't think this was legal. It's not as good either, but okay, it was legal before. It's okay. Um, I don't know. Three mana for a plummet is bad. Three mana for a destroy an artifact is bad. So. The difference with Abrade is that Abrade is super maintainable because killing creatures, dealing three damage to a creature is very good. Uh, this isn't in some in so much as going to be dead. So I don't care about this card really. Uh, the Who Cobra never saw play, never will. Elvish Adoration. Uh, it has four cycle, so that's a good thing to have. Um, it can generate some amount of mana. Eh, it's okay. It was already legal, mind you. It's, it's okay. Uh, first Empath. So, again, uh, cool to see it in common. I think it was... It was reprinted in course set as uncommon, so right now it went back to common. But with, the old, with this new art that I don't like, I prefer the old art that looks very weird and I don't understand it. Uh, yeah. It's okay. Uh, you want to you want to play this card in some ramp strategy uh, as a way of tutoring up uh, value high mana plays, I guess. Again, it's it's okay. It's okay. Uh, and this was already reprinted a lot, so it's not going to change a lot uh, the value of the card. But maybe you can find a copy or two for your decks. Invigorate is banned, sadly, so you can't play this card. Cosrex Predator, this is season plays in uh, Mono Green Stompy. So, sorry, Mono Green Stompy, no, uh, Mono Green Ponza, as a way of ramping you to 5 mana plays, or sorry, uh, 4 plus 2, 6, 7 mana plays on turn 5. So, that's a really good deal. Um, this card is really great if you think about it. It's a one and a green for a 3-3 three, three because you, it basically gives back two mana. Uh, but it doesn't see a lot of play. But maybe you can find your, your copies. Uh, so that's a good thing to have. Might of the Masses is doesn't see a lot of play, but it's a good effect if you have a very big board attacking and then just giving something uh, plus X plus X is going to be the difference between winning or losing the game. So. It's a good card. Already legal before, so doesn't change a lot. Sylvan Might, eh, you don't want this effect. This is a grindy card because it has flashback, but it's uh, stats and trample, so it's an aggressive thing to have. So you don't really care about this card in most popper decks. Uh, Whisper of the Wilds, I think it was legal before. Yeah. It's a mana dork, but it costs two and doesn't fix your your colors. Um, yeah. It's, isn't as good. Then, in the, um, in the multicolor... Um, ah, sorry. The review in green. In green, we got... Nothing too fancy, mostly just a couple of cool reprints in crop rotation, most, most, more than anything. Then Conclave Naturalist is a cool reprint, a, a cool card to have in the format. But nothing too great there either. Um, I don't think there is anything... Uh, okay, yeah, we have the reprint of Manamorphos. 
which is another valuable card because this card costs a lot. This is a very expensive card because it would stop it didn't sell a lot of printings. So it costs about five bucks now, it says for each uh, card. Um, so that's, that means that a playset of a common is going to cost like 20 bucks or something. So yeah, it's not the old art that's better than this, but it's still a good art. And in Magic Online it's even more pricier. So I expect this to drive the value down, to buy the, drive the cost down. So it going, it's going to be more available for more people to uh, play around with this card. It's a really cool card that doesn't see a lot of play in the format, but I guess it could see a bit more play because it's really good. It's a free country. It fixes your colors. It puts a creature, it puts a card in your graveyard. So it, it has so many synergies. Uh, being just a free card is amazing. Yeah. Um, let's see. I don't think there is anything else now. No. Okay. Now on the artifacts. Uh, this is a reprint, but never saw play. Never will. Cathodion, never saw play, never will. Chromatic start. So these are really cool to reprint, mostly because it's expensive on paper. If we look at that, we're going to find that it costs some amount of money, similar to Manamorphos. Okay, a bit less now. Um, and foils, it used to cost a lot. Well, the, the ones from Time Spiral and this cost, like, what did it say, like 45 bucks here? So this is going to mean that if you want to grab a couple of foils of this one, it's going to be easier. Also, it's expensive on Magic Online, so again, could reprint to have in the format. So uh, what I'm liking of this set is that we have so many of the cards that are expensive in the format being reprinted, and that's very good. That's really, really good for the format. Um, cranial Plating, a reprint, but it was, it's fun, so we don't care about it. Dark Steel Axe, uh, again, a reprint. Uh, it was already legal, we don't care about this because we have Bone Splitter. Eager Construct is a 2-2 that when it enters the battlefield, each player may scry one. Um, so, eh, it's not super great, you don't want to give your opponent value. Um, but still, 2 mana 2-2 two -two is playable, so maybe if you're like a combo deck that cares about artifact creatures, you can play this. Uh, <coughs> Uh, this was already legal, but you uh, didn't see a lot, of, didn't saw a lot of plays. Aeroflow and Chalice is a downshift, so this is now legal. It's a zero mana artifact that has multi kicker too, and it enters the battlefield with a charge counter for each time it was kicked, and you add colorless for each charge counter on it. This means that if you pay two, it's a, um, a taps for one. If you pay four, it taps for two. If you tap uh, pay six, it taps for three, and so on. Um, of course, paying 6 mana for a run spell is not nothing great. Maybe some weird Tron variant that cares about having a lot of mana can play this card. Um, it's also interestingly fetchable by uh, Trinket Mage. So if you are playing a Trinket Mage deck that cares about ramping out, this can help you there. Uh, it's a really interesting card. I'm going to add this to my queue, for example. So I like it for that reason. I don't think it's going to see a lot of play in Constructed, but maybe I'm wrong, and maybe it sees some play in, in, in some weird deck that I haven't envisioned yet. Expedition Map, a reprint, but it was banned. Interestingly, it has a showcase heart. So if you play this like in in, in, in some variation of popper that cares about uh, that doesn't care about the ban list, then you can play this card. Um, the art is gorgeous and it's going to cost a lot of money, but it's going to be really, really cool. So yeah, I, I really, really like this art. I, I don't know why. It's just the colors and everything is, looks so sleek. I really like it. So yeah, uh, reprint. Uh, we don't really care about this because it was banned like a month ago or so whatever. Fred Husk is an interesting card. Um, this card sees some amount of play in some decks, uh, mostly decks that, uh, for example, Affinity that cares about artifacts. Uh, so, yeah. Um, 
Interesting reprint. Nothing of value here. I don't think it's an expensive car. But we can check. No, it costs like uh, nothing. So yeah. If you want to have a couple of copies, then you, you might. No. Gleaming Barrier, never saw play. It may be will because it has a bit of an upside when you when it dies, you create a treasure. So for example, if you have like a national saltor, it means that uh, you get your mana back and a treasure. So maybe you have some way of comboing there. I don't know, not seeing it, but interesting nonetheless. Golem Skin Gauntless is a new card and it gives plus one plus zero for each equipment attached to the card you are attaching this to. And it equips or two. So sadly, this isn't playable in our format. Mostly because if you have a lot of equipment, uh, what are you doing, right? <laughs> uh, so if you give it plus three, plus three, you are a, a bit ahead of the curve, but sorry, plus three, plus oh, you, you're a bit ahead of the curve, but you, it requires you to have a lot of artifacts. So I don't think this is going to see a lot of play. Uh, Again, interesting card, but nothing special. Equal Wellspring, it's a cool reprint. Uh, again, if you want to have a couple of foil ones, you you have na you have the possibility now. Uh, interesting. Iron Bully, Bully never saw play. I think um, it's an interesting card, though. It gives a counter to a creature, so maybe you can do some things with it, with proliferate and such. It's okay. Iron League Steed, I don't think, I don't remember seeing this card ever. No, it wasn't legal before, so it's a new card. Though the stats aren't great, right? It's 4 mana 3-3 three, three haste, or 4 mana 2-2 two, two haste with a 1-1 one, one attached to it. Um, yeah, that's not enough for the format. Maybe if you are if you care about counters on artifact creatures, you care about this card. I don't see it playable, um, but new card nonetheless. So interesting there. Magnifying glass. This is like a worse in several <laughs> in several different ways of Bonders ornament. So it's a three mana spell that taps for four to draw a card, but it investigates in, instead of just drawing the card. So it creates a token that's a, a clue that you can sacrifice to draw a card. So it means that you have to tap 4 mana this and 2 extra mana to draw a card. So I don't think this is going to see play. Um, but it may be good in cube or something. Uh, Metal Spinner Puzzle not. it was already legal. I don't think it saw a lot of play. It's a bit bad, right? You have to pay like 5 mana to draw 2 cards. Uh, yeah, not where you want to be. Uh, Mirror Retriever is a new card and a new addition to the format. And sorry, not a new card; it's a reprint, but it's a new addition to the format. It's a one-one for two mana that when it dies, you return another target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. So um, there is already a combo going around and people trying out this card with National Soldier. So if you have two of these, you can sacrifice one to return the other one. Uh, to your hand and with the mana you generated by sacrificing it, you can play it again. So it basically means that you have infinite uh, enter the battlefield triggers and dying triggers. Uh, so you can kill someone by, for example, disciple that we saw before. So you could have that combo in popper because this is legal. Um, but I already tried this combo a, a bit in Magic Online and it didn't felt as well as good as I thought it would. Uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, to assemble. Um, once assembled, is interactable. Like the opponent can just disrupt you in so many different ways. And also now with uh, a braid, it means that your Ashnal Saldar is a bit susceptible to removal. Um, you can still uh, do some some cool cool things with it. Uh, it fits into the deck with Disciple of the Bolt, Atog, and Theorem Sculptor. So if you have two Ethereum Sculptors, you can just sacrifice Retrievers uh, and play it for zero. So it gives infinite sacrifice fodder for Atog. Again, um, nothing amazing, but 
since this card is already a value card, it may see play in some builds of affinity as a way of you recovering some artifacts that were destroyed by your opponent. They say that you play a couple of these and then your opponent destroys your uh, mirror enforcer, you can just get it back with the retriever and play it for free. So, yeah. Also, the ability to just combo out uh, in one swoop it means that uh, it has some benefits there. So I expect people to grow with this, um, even people 5 0 with this, but I don't see this as a full combo deck um, better, better than other combo decks. Uh, but this card as a part of addition of a mid-range deck or something like that, I expected that to see play and be more effective. Uh, time will, will tell, maybe I'm wrong and maybe the combo is uh, tier 1, I don't think so. Uh, as I said, I already tested it, and uh, even with that, even with my deck not having any way of uh, interacting with the opponent, just a straight up combo, I wasn't able to build that uh, a deck that uh, consistently combo before the turn five. So, for being a linear combo deck, it's a bit slow. So I don't expect this to see play as a full combo card. Okay. A cool card nonetheless, and I expect it to see play, if that makes sense. Then here we have Pieces Strider. This is a reprint, and this card is a bit difficult to find, actually. I don't think it's going to be very expensive. But, uh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe if you care about having a copy at common rarity, because Battlebond didn't so print in. Magic Online, so if you want to have this card as common in Magic Online, then you are going to be able to. Interesting, nothing too uh, interesting though, <laughs> it's just okay. Petal Prism is a card that doesn't see any play, but it's a bit expensive, I would pres presume. Sorry, it's called Petal. Okay, no, it's uh, okay. Uh, this card doesn't see a lot of play in our format because it's just uh, it's just mana, right? It, it can accelerate you to a turn three five drop, and that's amazing. Um, but the format isn't about that, I don't think. Uh, maybe maybe it's just there waiting for someone to break it. Who knows? But right now it doesn't see any play. So uh, again, if you want to have a copy of, or two of these. You're going to be able to, and that's fine. Uh, but right, Spellbomb, again, doesn't see a lot of play. It's cool. Uh, it's like a shock that maybe cycles, so it has some upside. Uh, it was already legal and didn't see any play, so that's okay. Seagull Slicer, already legal, didn't see play, that's okay. Skin Wing is new in the format, but for mana for an artifact, that's just a 2 2 flying. And it is for 6. Uh, it's just too much, right? Too much to be playable. Similar to a stick, uh, sickle sizer. This is good in limited and cube and all that. Just too expensive for, for popper. I expect this to see exact same destiny, right? Just okay in limited, not good in, in popper. Springly Throne, a cool reprint for Popper. Maybe you prefer this this art. You're going to be able to have this art now. Um, yeah, this is a card that is playing Affinity and some other weird decks that just want acceleration and fixing. Um, so yeah, uh, be sure to grab a couple of these uh, cards if you want, if you are able to. Search Node, I think, is new for us. Yeah, so it does what well if you with six charge counters and you can move one charge counter from here to another artifact. Eh. Again, we don't have any interactions with that except a couple of uh, niche ones. And this only does that, so I don't expect this to see a lot of play. But maybe you are able to just break it somehow. So good luck to you, if, and if you do, all the power to you. Uh, Tumble Magnet, never saw play, I don't think. Um, it's like a opposition kind of effect that only lasts three times. So it's okay. 
Pulse of Countless is again super strong and limited. I don't expect this to see play in popper. This was already legal and never saw play, I don't think. So it's okay. Welding Jar. Uh, I think this card is again a card that sees play in modern and such, so it's well known. Uh, it's also legal in popper already, but it doesn't see play because it doesn't do a lot. <laughs> so yeah, maybe this will see. Uh, some place somewhere sometime in the future, but uh, I don't see it And then on the lands front we have Ash Barrens, which is always a good reprint. It costs like around a dollar uh, Having access to it in foil is going to be great So I'm happy with this reprint. It's going to be to make the card more available for everybody Nasty Citadel, I think this card doesn't is really cheap Should be cheap because it was reprinted at Nauseam. So it's a fine reprint. Maybe you want to have a couple of extra copies, you are able to now. And then the Ursulans. So, what's interesting about the Ursulans is that, <clears throat> first off, the card already costs around two bucks each land. So, being it at common means that there are going to be a lot of prints of this card available um, and it has this cool art uh, that's like very old school so I, I really enjoy that and uh, more, more interestingly there, there is also this cycle of new arts for the Ursa, Tau, uh, Ursa lands and that's going to cost a, a big money but if you care about this you're going to be able to I, I really like the art, it's very weird right? And it forms a panorama. Um, and I really like the art mostly because it's weird, not because it's great, right? It's kind of, I don't know, the colors and everything is kind, is kind of old school, so I really like that. Um, maybe this is your jam and maybe you enjoy very much this art. Also, new access to um, to this uh, to this art, that's a very classic art and with a black border, so maybe some people are fine with that uh, yeah and that kind of rounds up everything I wanted to go through all the cards, all the new cards uh, and all the reprints uh, final conclusion, here we have a lot of valuable reprints for the format mostly things related to Tron for some reason <laughs> but yeah cards like Manamorpho, Subliet, uh, the Ursa Lance uh, crop rotation, so many valuable reprints for us. So this means that the cost of the format is going to go down. And uh, more importantly, the downshifts. I'm really, really happy with the downshift. I expected them to break the format again, like printing, I don't know, like a card that made Tron super strong or something like that. We didn't saw that. We saw mid-range cards, so I'm really happy with that. A break is great for mid-range. Um, and cast down is great for mid range, and bone picker is great for black decks that need a push right now because they are bad. <laughs> Most of the black decks need a need a big push. So cast down and bone picker are going to be great for black. Um, Abrade is going to be great for red, and then some couple of uh, interesting downshifts like Arbivian Restoration and Sanctum Spirit. So cards like are interesting and ancestral blade that people are trying to pro around and try to do some cool things or maybe a lot of So um, yeah, I see this this set as a net positive for the format, and I'm very happy about it. Um, yeah, they didn't they didn't fuck it up this time. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any comments on the new cards. Um, see you next time.